Hello, and thank you so much for joining me for the next 30 minutes or so to talk about how to create the perfect workflow in AHA. My name is Claire George, and I'm on our product marketing team here at AHA. And like I say, I'm really excited today to talk through how to set up and manage workflows in AHA. This is a topic that I am especially passionate about because I truly believe that getting your workflows right are so important both to team productivity and to team happiness. And never more so than in the current environment where so many teams are navigating working remotely for the first time. As you probably know, our team here at AHA is all remote and always has been. And we use the AHA application to manage literally every aspect of our work. The workflow functionality in AHA is absolutely critical to keep us moving in the same direction and getting work done fast. And so we're thrilled to have this opportunity to share some of our experiences and best practices with you to help your team. Now, we understand that there is not a one size fits all approach when it comes to workflows. Organizations have different levels of structure, different teams use different methodologies. And of course, even within the same team, we're often responsible for getting multiple different types of work done. And so there are many variables to consider to create that perfect workflow. And honestly, to do your best work, you need a tool that adapts to you, not the other way around. Now, as you probably already know, AHA provides a centralized place to capture all of your strategic planning data, including your goals, your initiatives, your releases, your ideas, and of course, your features and your requirements. Now, you can create custom workflows in AHA for each one of those record types to really match the way your team works. And not only that, you can decide whether you want to use the same workflow or different workflows across each team. So you can create one workflow and apply it to multiple different workspaces, or you can create a different workflow for a record type within each workspace. So there really is a lot of flexibility there to make sure you get exactly the right level of consistency in your organization. Now, recently, AHA released some really important new functionality that gives you even more control over the way you manage workflows. We added the ability to choose between a flexible workflow, which means that work can move through each workflow in a more fluid way. So you could skip steps, you could move forwards and backwards in the workflow. It really is flexible. Or you can create a fixed workflow. Now, a fixed workflow enforces that each step in the workflow is followed in a logical and sequential way. It also gives you the option to add approval gates to your workflow. So between using flex flexible and fixed workflows, you really can set up your workflows in AHA to better control how you manage the entire process and to really you know, match it to the way you want work to be handled. To explain how this functionality works, we are going to talk through two really important workflows for product managers, and those are initiatives and features. Now, I know we always say strategy first at AHA, and so normally I would start with the initiatives example, but I'm actually going to break rank here today and start with features, and I'm going to do that for a very good reason. Managing the progression of features is probably where most product managers spend most of their time in AHA each day. And it really is those day-to-day -day workflows that lend themselves more to the flexible workflow approach that we discussed. So from there, we'll then go on and talk about initiatives because they lend themselves better to a fixed workflow. And that's because initiatives are typically um, those bigger investments of work, and often need a more formal process in place um, to manage and approve them. So that will be a really great opportunity to point out all of the new functionality that we recently released. As we go through both of these examples, there are three major concepts that I'm going to point out, um, and that is status, steps, and sign-offs. Now, no matter what 
record type you're building a workflow for in AHA, thinking about those three things, status, steps, and sign-offs, will really help you make the right decisions to get the most out of the functionality. So first, you need to think about statuses and the different statuses that work moves through um, and how you want to customize them to suit the way your team works. Secondly, you need to think about the steps or the action of progressing work through your workflow and whether you want to handle transitions between statuses in a flexible way or enforce them in more of a fixed way. And then thirdly, you'll want to think about how to handle sign-offs or how work gets approved in your organization and incorporate that into your workflows too. So really thinking about those three concepts, like I say, will be super helpful um, when you go and build your own workflows. So here we are on the features board. So let's get started by talking about status. So I'm in my Fredwin Cycling demo environment here. Um, like I mentioned, I'm on the features board. I'm just going to open up a feature here called Sponsored Accomplishments. And let's take a look at the status dropdown. So a couple of things I want to point out here. The first thing is that this is an example workflow. Every record type in AHA comes with a pre-built workflow to help you get started. And I'll show you exactly how to customize that and make it your own in a little bit. Now, we've already talked a little bit about the concept of a flexible workflow, but let me show you what that means. So here you can see I can select any status. So you know, if we take this feature as an example, as I start working on it, I might move it into design, or I might decide that this feature doesn't need any design work and it's ready to go straight into development. So in a flexible workflow, I can skip you know, those steps or those statuses in my workflow and go straight to development and really handle the work in an as needed way. The really nice thing about using these statuses is that it helps the team to really manage and communicate the progress of work in a consistent way. So if we you know, look more broadly at our features board here, you can see that the feature cards are color coded by status. And so you can very quickly look and get a sense of how the work is progressing across all of the different releases. Status also informs how work is managed on the workflow view. Now, this is a view that isn't automatically enabled in your workspace by default. So you might need to just update your um, navigation settings to make sure that's included. But here you can see that the work is organized by status columns. Now, I have to say that this is actually one of my favorite views in AHA. I am a Kanban geek, um, so I am a little bit biased. But what I really love about this view is that I can see all of the work across all of the team, across all of the different you know, releases and schedules, and I can really see how things are flowing and where things are at. And it's just so important to me, this view, to keep things moving in a very fluid and fast way and quickly identify if there's areas where work's getting held up or if you know, the team needs to jump in and help. The other reason that I like this view so much is that seeing the statuses visually laid out like this really helps to prompt opportunities to optimize your workflows. So you can really get a sense of, you know, do we have the statuses laid out in the right order? Are there any statuses that are missing that would kind of help the team keep work moving along? So to prepare for this tutorial today and to think about ways to optimize um, this features workflow, I actually went to take a look and see how our product management team manages their work and what statuses they use. So I quickly noticed that after the under consideration status, they actually have an in defined status, which makes a lot of sense, right? Once you start work on a feature, the first thing you need to do is really get a handle on the requirements before you either move it to the design phase or go straight into development. So I'm going to take that example and we'll use that to go ahead and talk about how to customize workflows in AHA. So let's head over to our account settings and we'll go to statuses and workflows. A couple of things just to mention here. So a key point to keep in mind is that in AHA you create workflows at the account level and you apply them at the workspace level. And again, that ties in with what we were talking about earlier with how you can create a workflow once and apply it across many teams you know, for consistency. 
The other thing to note is that your workflows are organized by different workspace types. And that's because different workspaces use different record types. So for example, in a product workspace, we use features. In a marketing workspace, we use activities. So organizing your workflows in this way keeps them really nicely organized. The only exception to that are goals and initiatives. Those are considered universal record types because they can be applied in the same way across all workspaces. Okay, so now let's go into our product workspace grouping here and let's talk about how to add a new workflow. Now, actually adding a new workflow is very straightforward. You just select the record type that you want to create a new workflow for and off you go. Just to save us a couple of moments in this tutorial today, I did actually go ahead and start customizing a new features workflow, like I said, just to get us going a little bit faster. So we talked about wanting to add a new define status to our workflow. So let's go ahead and do that. All I need to do is select where in the workflow I want to add that status, click the plus icon, and then I can very quickly drop that status into my workflow. I'm going to choose a custom color. And remember, that's the color that will appear on your features board. I could add you know, more optional description if that would be helpful. And then the last thing I need to do here is just add a status category. So these are just high level groupings you know, to categorize whether you consider the work in a not started state, in progress, done. So I'm just going to choose in progress because that's the option that makes the most sense here. So I'll add that status. And I think that looks pretty good. If I had added the status in the wrong place, it's worth noting that you can very easily drag and drop it and reorder your statuses to get your workflow exactly right. So now let's talk about steps or the action of progressing work through your workflow. You'll notice here that you have the option to add transitions to each status. When you add a transition, a button appears on the feature card next to the status dropdown. And this really helps users understand what the next logical step is. So here I'm just going to add a couple of additional transitions. I already got started with this earlier, uh, but now that we've added that new status, we have a couple more that we need to add. So let's add a second one here to show that work's ready to move from design, so from define to design. And I'll select the design status. And great. So now I have all my statuses set up the way I want. I have all of the transitions set up the way that I want and I'm ready to go ahead and apply this custom workflow to my workspace. So now we're going to head over to our workspace settings. We'll go into configure and we'll scroll down through the workflow section until we see edit features workflow. So all I need to do is choose the new workflow that I've created. It's important to spend a moment just making sure that the current status is used on your features board map to the new statuses in the way you want. So I do have a couple of changes that I need to make here. In design needs to go to design, in development needs to go to development. And great, that looks ready to go. So let's update the feature statuses. I get one more opportunity to check I really want to do it. And great, that should have been updated. So now we'll go back to the features board and take a look and see the changes. Now, if I open up the features dropdown, you can see the new defined status is there exactly as you would expect. The other thing you'll notice is that because we added those transition buttons, you can see these on the feature card. So here, if I want to go ahead and move my feature from under consideration into that defined status, I can just click ready to define and you'll see how the color of the feature card changes and the status updates. So great, our status, our steps are working just the way we want. Now, what about sign-offs? Because this is a flexible workflow, we really don't want to make the approval process too rigid, but at the same time, it's really important to make sure that the team has really good clarity around reviews. So if we go down to the to-dos section on the feature, you'll see 
that there's this new option to add an approval type of to-do. Now, our team here at AHA literally lives and dies by to-dos. We create one whenever a team member is needed to look at work and provide input. It really gives clarity to how we work together and sets expectations around timelines for getting work looked at and collaborating. But there are some to-dos such as you know, if I need sign off from our CEO or from our head of marketing that carry a bit more weight. And so creating an approval to do really helps to communicate that a go, no go decision is needed. So here, you know, if we imagine I've been working on sponsored accomplishments, I've been building out some requirements, and now I need our head of product management to go ahead and review those requirements and make sure that we can proceed with, you know, implementing that feature. So if I create an approval to do, and ordinarily I would add far more details, I would give a full description about you know, the context of the, of the feature and any information that is needed to assist with the review, and then we go ahead and assign it. Now you'll see I am assigning it to myself. I would like to point out here, it's definitely not a best practice to approve your own work. It's always good to get some objective oversight, um, but I'm doing that so that I can show you what the experience is like for the person that the approval to do is assigned to. So we'll set a due date, we'll give ourselves a couple of days here to review this work, save it. And now when I go back to the feature card, you'll see the new approval to do created. If I open this up, of course it looks like a regular to do, but there's a key difference. At the bottom, you'll see there's this option to approve and reject the work. Now, one thing I would love to point out is with the approval button, you can choose to approve the work with no changes needed, but you can also choose to approve the work with changes. This is a really nice option for those times when you review work, you don't need to review it again, you don't need to see it again, but you just want to say, yep, keep this moving, make these changes, and you're good to go. Um, so this just really gives clarity to that approval decision and what needs to happen. Okay, so adding these ad hoc approvals is a great way to streamline the review cycles but let's just pause a moment and recap what we've talked about so far so we started out by talking about statuses um, how you can use them both on the features board and on the workflow board to communicate the progress of work and then we spent time together learning how to customize and apply those statuses we then talked about steps and how you can use transition buttons as an option to move work forward and then the third thing we did was talk about how to manage sign-offs using the approval to do. So at this point, I'm going to now move over to our initiatives board, and we're going to now compare how to manage a workflow using that fixed approach um, that we talked about earlier. I'm going to use that same approach of going through steps, sorry, statuses, steps, and sign-offs. And by going through it in the same order, I think it will really help you to get a handle on, like I said, the different options that are available to you. So here we are on our initiatives view. Let me open up an initiative. Now, initiatives really are those bigger investments or bigger efforts of work. So generally speaking, they do require a bit more discipline. It's really important to make sure there's good business alignment about where you know this time and effort is being invested. I know here at AHA we set new initiatives every six months and tie them to our corporate goals and so it is a more formal process to make sure that we're all focused on the right things and you know aligned about what we're going to be working on. So let's talk about what this means first of all from a status perspective. Now right now I still have this workflow set up as a flexible workflow so you can see my different statuses in the drop down menu but you will notice I've already gone ahead and customized them and I've set up my statuses in a very different way to how I had them set up on the features board and that's because I wanted to build in really clear checkpoints for where an approval is needed and this is more than just assigning an approval to do, it's more of a stage gate that each initiative needs to pass through. So for example, I might put an analysis together, put a business case together to you know, talk about what the initiative and the business value of that initiative is going to be. Before I go any further, that business case needs approval. Does it make financial sense? Is it aligned with our 
you know, corporate objectives. Then we'd go into a deeper phase of definition and you know, build out the scope of the initiative and really get the requirements ironed out. And again, I'd want a more formal checkpoint to make sure that the scope of the work is in alignment. And then at that point, the work would go into implementation, we'd get the work done, and then there should be a more formal review or sign off at the end to make sure we all agree that the initiative can be considered done, that it's been achieved in the way we set out to. So the status has really helped to communicate that workflow, but it doesn't really make sense to have that same level of flexibility. I don't want to be able to go straight from analysis to implementation and skip those approval and definition phases. So that's where the fixed workflow is going to help enforce the logical order and the logical progression of the work. So now we're going to head back to our account settings and we're going to talk about how to make that workflow a fixed workflow. So if I go under our universal groupings, you'll see the new initiatives workflow that I've already set up. And you'll see all those custom statuses that I've set up and I had already gone ahead and added those um, transition buttons. So to change it to a fixed workflow is very simple. It literally is a matter of selecting fixed and that immediately captures and enforces that workflow so that it now has to follow the order that we're setting. It's important to understand that transitions take on a new level of significance in a fixed workflow. And that's because now the only way you can change the status of the initiative is to use that transition button. So every status needs a transition. And the other thing to note is that you can actually add more than one transition where it makes sense. And that's because there are still times where you're going to need different pathways. So let's imagine here that I've started work on this initiative, it's gone into the analysis phase, and perhaps for some reason during the analysis, we decide not to continue the work. So I don't want the only option to be to move it to the approval status. I want to have another option to abandon it. So I can add additional transitions here to set out the possible pathways. Okay, so I think we've got our statuses, we've got our steps set up. Um, now let's go back to the initiatives board and see what it looks like now that we've got a fixed workflow in place. So if I open up that same initiative that we were looking at earlier, now you'll see that there is no status dropdown and that the only way to move work forward is to use those transition buttons. So that's great. Now I can really be confident that every initiative has to go through work in the same way. But I want to take this a step further. I really want to make sure I get a formal sign off before the initiative can move into the next phase of work. And that's where the new approval gates are really going to help us out. So next, we'll talk about how to sign off work at each step in our workflow. Um, and the first thing we need to do is to create workflow approval groups. Now workflow approval groups are managed very much in the same way as the workflows themselves. You create them at the account level and you apply them at the workspace level. So here, right now, all we're thinking about is the high level groups within the organization who are responsible for signing off work. So executives could be an example, the finance team could be an example. Um, I know I'm gonna go ahead and add another group here for the legal team. You can add as many groups as you want. Once you've added your groups, you then go to the workspace settings and again, open up workflow approval groups. And this is where you can add different people to the approval groups. And we want you to be able to customize those by team. So every team might need to have its initiatives approved by the executive or the finance team, but it's likely a different person who's actually responsible for doing it. So this is what really gives you the flexibility to set those approval groups in the way that makes the most sense. So you just need to select um, other users in your AHA account who um, are part of that approval group. You can add as many folks as you want. And again, that's as much as it takes. Um, now my approval groups are set up and I'm ready to go ahead now and actually add those approval gates directly to that initiatives workflow. 
So one last time, we will head back to our initiatives workflow and we'll talk about how to add an approval gate. So the key thing to think about when you're adding approval gates is that the sign off must be given before work leaves the status that it's currently in. So let's explain exactly what I mean by that. So let's imagine we've started work on the analysis, no sign off needed there, we can keep proceeding. We put together our analysis or our business case, and then we're ready to move it to approval. Again, no sign off is needed yet because we're just moving it to that approval status. Now the sign off is needed before the work leaves the approval status and the definition phase begins. So I'm going to go ahead and add the approval to the ready for definition status. So I open up the transition, I just click the approval required checkbox here. I'm going to fill this in really the same way I would for an approval to do. So we'll give it a name, a review analysis, we can add some details, please review the business case for this initiative. Great. Select a workflow group, approval group. So I'm going to select the executive team here. And then here you can choose whether you want any approval or all approvals. Now, what we mean by this is that if you have added more than one person to an approval group, you can decide, does everybody in that group need to approve it? Or can any one of those people approve it and then have the work proceed forward? You can then add a due date. Um, and this is really where you set your ideal timeline for getting that approval done. You can actually go into the approval task and adjust that date um, if you need to tweak it slightly because this approval task will be sent out automatically once the initiative moves into that approval status. The last thing I need to do here is to decide what's going to happen if this analysis gets rejected. So there could be a couple of feasible options here. We might decide if it's rejected, it just needs to go back into analysis for a bit more work, or we might decide that it's abandoned altogether. So I'm just going to say abandoned, we'll save that. And now you'll see that this new approval gate is added to the ready for definition transition. Now to really build out this workflow, I would go through and I would add similar approval gates to my other approval statuses. So I'd add one to the definition approval status here so that it gets signed off before we move to the implementation stage. And then we'd add another sign off um, before we actually go ahead and launch the initiative or consider it completed. But we'll just add the one approval gate for now um, and head back to the initiatives view and test out how that looks in practice. Let's open up our launch marketplace initiative and let's go ahead and move this into the approve analysis status. So now if I scroll down, you'll see that this new workflow approval section has been added to our initiative. So if I open up this approval task, you'll see that the workflow has automatically generated the approval task in the exact way that we set it up in the settings. Like I mentioned earlier, if we need to change the date here, we could go ahead and change a different date. Um, we could also change any details about the title or the description details as needed. So I'm going to go ahead and approve this initiative. Um, again, you know, the, the same approve and reject buttons that you saw on the ad hoc approval to do that we looked at over on the features board. So let me go ahead and approve this. And straight away, you'll see that the status of the launch marketplace initiative has now moved to definition. One last thing that I really want to show you now is how you can manage those approval tasks with this new pivot report. So in the workflow approval section, you have this new option view and pivot report. If I open the report up, you can now see that I can view in one place all of the different approval tasks across all of the initiatives in this workspace. So this is a really nice way to 
quickly see the approvals that have happened, if any are pending, and of course, if you need to see an audit trail of the approval decisions, this view is perfect for being able to see that too. So again, here with our initiatives workflow, we've gone through those three steps. We looked at status and we particularly focused on how to set up those statuses to add those approval checkpoints as part of our workflow. Then we talked about steps and we changed our workflow to a fixed workflow so that those steps have to now happen in a very logical and sequential way. And then the last thing we did was to add approval gates um, so that work has to be signed off in a very consistent way as well. So I hope that by going through the example of a features workflow using a flexible approach and going through an initiative workflow using a fixed approach, you can really see the differences in how you can use the functionality that is available in our HA. One parting thought that I want to leave you with is that it really is important to take the time to think about the workflow that makes the most sense for your team. So to share a little bit about our marketing team's experience, when we first released the new fixed workflow functionality, we tried creating a fixed workflow for, our, for managing our day-to-day -day activities. We very quickly found that it was too restrictive. Our team moves very fast. Um, we manage work in an as-needed way and we respond very quickly. So for that, that type of work, it really made more sense for us to stay on the flexible workflow, but to really take advantage of those ad hoc approvals to streamline our review processes. But on contrary to that, we did find that for our initiatives, that's really where the fixed workflow made a lot of sense. We actually wanted more restriction in place to make sure that every, each initiative goes through the workflow in the same way, and that we just have more consistency about how we get those sign-offs. So, you know, do experiment with the functionality, see what works best for your team, um, but just know all of the different options that are available to help you get that right balance between, you know, consistency and flexibility and control. So that really is everything I wanted to cover today. Um, I would like to mention that as you go and try building your own workflows. We do have some excellent resources in our knowledge base that really explain all the details of the functionality and provide step-by-step -step guidance to help you apply it in your own AHA account. And of course, if you have any questions, please do reach out to our customer success team at support at aha.io. Our product experts are always on hand and always more than happy to answer your questions. So thank you once again for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed learning about how to create the perfect workflow in AHA and have fun creating your own. Okay, thanks for joining me. Bye.